Mina, konbanwa, Jesus freaking gamer here. First Samuel chapter 29, an interesting little lesson today. And hopefully it is one that uh, believers in particular who see this video can take to heart. This is going to, again, 1 Samuel 29, the Philistines are gathering up against Israel, and <clears throat> David is still serving Achish, the king of Gath, a Philistine, interestingly enough. And so they're about to go to war against Israel, and so the lords of the Philistines go to Achish, and they're like, they say in verse 3, then the princes of the Philistines said, what are these Hebrews doing here? Hebrews in the plural, David and his men. And Achish said to the princes of the Philistines, is this not David, the servant of Saul, king of Israel, who has been with me these days or these years? And to this day I have found no fault in him since he defected to me. But the princes of the Philistines were angry with him, so the princes of the Philistines said to him, Make this fellow return, that he may go back to the place which you have appointed for him, and do not let him go down with us to battle, lest in the battle he become our adversary. For with what could he reconcile himself to his master, if not with the heads of these men? Is this not David, of whom they sang to one another in dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands? So Achish basically says, David, you gotta go. David said, why do I have to go? I've never done anything wrong. And David and Achish says, I'm just going to read verse 9 word for word. And Achish answered and said to David, I know that you are as good in my sight as an angel of God. Nevertheless, the princes of the Philistines have said, he shall not go up with us to the battle. It's really interesting to me. Now, Saul did fall away. But he was still a believer in Yahweh. And it's real, and, well, that. Moving on to the point first, it's interesting to me that how this lost man, Achish, doesn't believe in God, doesn't follow God, he sees David's worthwhileness, that's the word, even though he was not saved for the time. There were no Christians back then because Christ hadn't come yet. But this unbeliever sees the value that's in David. Now, there are several things that could be theoretically wrong with this argument. One, he David hadn't served a chish nearly as long as he did Saul, so with given time, maybe there would have been reason for him to say, oh, David's a threat to my throne. I need to need to get rid of him. Two, what if the lords of the Philistines were right? If pressed into battle, would David have betrayed them and killed them? Well, not for the sake of, um, not for the sake of Def, um, defecting back to Saul or pleasing Saul, but more for the sake of I'm not going to kill my own brethren, the people that one day I'm going to rule over, as Samuel prophesied over. So those are potential arguments against what I'm saying. Hopefully the main point is still clear that someone, and of course the third argument being, well, Saul technically wasn't a believer anymore. Well, I would say Saul was still a believer in the Lord, the Lord had simply abandoned him and withdrawn his spirit from him. That's a very big deal. So it's kind of like, yeah, Saul still worshipped Yahweh, but not truly, not really because of unbelief. Despite, but despite that, a non-believer saw David's loyalty. And the fourth point would be that David would eventually one day turn around against the Philistines yet again when he did become king over Judah and all of Israel. So I feel like I've kind of shouted down my own point royally. For, back, for added ammunition and backup for my argument, I'm going to reference the story of Josiah and how at the time of his death, he went up against, I believe it was Pharaoh king of Egypt at the time, and that Pharaoh said, don't come against me. The Lord has ordered me to go against these other people. Don't get involved in the battle or you're going to get yourself killed. And sure enough, Josiah was killed. Google is your friend. Type in Josiah's death. That should bring up the appropriate scriptures where someone who was lost, not only did he get it right and tell, give Josiah, a non-believer giving a believer, good advice, he even spoke forth what the will of the Lord was. Now, could you argue that Pharaoh at that point was a believer? Maybe? Tentatively? I don't really think so. The pharaohs back to those times, they themselves considered themselves living gods. So I don't believe that that pharaoh was necessarily saved, but what he spoke on behalf of the Lord ended up being true. Hopefully, and hopefully I haven't destroyed and weakened my own point, but I want to give you all of the evidence from an objective standpoint. What hit me when I read this, 
Could I be wrong? Of course I could be wrong. But what hit me when I read this was that sometimes the, the unbelievers have it right and the non-believers have it wrong. Certainly if you back up a previous chapter when Saul's consulting the medium, he shouldn't have consulted the medium. But the medium brought forth the um, prophet Samuel, not getting into whether well, that a demon, was that the actual prophet Samuel. I'm not going to get into that at the moment. That's probably a 30-minute sermon waiting to happen right there. But nonetheless, whatever spirit came up, claiming to be Samuel, that the medium brought up, called it that Saul would die in the upcoming battle. So, all this to say sometime, and, and the thing is, David's heart was loyal. Saul didn't see it. This F Philistine king saw David's loyalty and saw David's true heart. Even though David would eventually, as king of Israel, have to fight against the Philistines. He saw David's pureness of heart. He saw his loyalty. Sometimes the believers the, don't see the stuff that's right in front of them, and the non-believers see it easily. So as believers, we can't just tune out what the non-believers say. Sometimes they're accurate. Sometimes their criticisms are dead on. Sometimes they can give us good advice, and we would not be wise to completely ignore them. Sometimes they're worth listening to. Obviously, if they say Jesus isn't Lord and God isn't real, that's wrong. But when they tell you how to do, when you, they're like, hey man, this thing that you're doing doesn't look right, doesn't feel right, doesn't appear right. Sometimes they're right and you're wrong. And we believers need to listen to those guys around us that speak into our lives. Sometimes even our enemies can be right and we're wrong. So keep an open mind. It's wisdom to listen to a multitude of counsel. That's in the book of Proverbs. Again, Google's your friend. And that wraps it up for this video. Think about it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I love you. And God bless.